Good evening, I'm Black Bright, or good morning, depending on which part of the world you are. Um, welcome to my channel. First time passing through, please like, subscribe, and share. Um, for my existing subscribers, thank you. Hi. And um, yeah, what did I want to talk about today? Well, we've had it up to our eyeballs with Brexit. So I'm going to come from it with a different angle, as I usually do. I don't normally talk about the norm so even though it seems like I'm talking about what everybody else is talking about hopefully I put a little different spin on it so first of all um what was I gonna say I believe that the Brexit um Brexit was a racist agenda which has gone awfully wrong if I'm wrong then I stand corrected but that's what I believe I believe that the most people who voted to um, who voted to leave the EU, it was based on the that poster with all those Syrian refugees. It was based on immigration, and I think that was the main reason. I think the fact that there was money for the NHS that might have been a little bit okay for, you know, the elderly and people who think they might be sick and who might need it. But I think the push in the direction of the EU was basically racially motivated. So, I know. Anyway, what was I going to say? I don't want to insult the intelligence of 17.4 million. But did Brexiteers know they were being set, they were setting the country up to fail? The reason why I say that is because even though um, people voted for Brexit, and I think most of them Brex um, voted for Brexit with a good intention, really. You know, you're in a country, you don't see many people of your colour around, and you start feeling a bit overwhelmed and intimidated. So you think, OK, yeah, and they show you all these pictures. And so a lot of people will think, yeah, we're overrun by immigrants. And yeah, these facts, what they're telling us is true, even though we know historically that politicians have a way of, you know, disguising the truth. So what happens as it is now, we've been told a host of lies. And we're in a position where not just black people are affected, not just immigrants are affected, but the working class and the middle class will be affected. Don't think anybody who is on their little high horse, who's in their little homes and who feel, oh yeah, I've got my car, I've got my good job, I'm okay, Jack. Everybody is going to be affected apart from the rich. And you know why that's going to happen? Because the rich do not discriminate. There's the rich and the poor. They do not want any in between. So, that is not what Brexiteers voted for. They didn't vote for austerity. They did not vote for poverty. They did not vote for germ warfare. They didn't bank on people being driven into homelessness, poverty, on the streets, without jobs. That's not what they, that's not what they banked on. They believed it when they said, when the politicians said, we're going to be economically better off. That the that Brexit will be the best trade deal ever. That the EU will have no worries. Their rights will be respected. That the NHS will be given lots of money. They believed it. Foolishly believed it. And now all we hear time and time again is they knew what they were voting for. They knew, you know, and then they start bullying people and say, do you think, um, are we insulting 17.4 million? No, we're not insulting 17.4 million. On the ballot paper, it did not say deal or no deal. It just said leave Brexit. Nobody knew the intricacies of what was involved. Nobody knew the sham that was involved. And the thing is, they're playing around with our lives. Those rich politicians are playing around with our lives. 
and they don't give a damn because when they're ready, they up and leave with all their millions. They don't have to wonder or oh, whether or not I've got enough money to jump on a plane or whether I've got enough money to do this. They have their homes hidden safely wherever. Safe is the key and operative word here. They know where they're going. They've already set it up. And all they see now is the UK is a dump. It's no longer got, you know, wonderful buildings because all the buildings, are, are they're not maintained. They've been bought by people who are abroad, who've invested in them and have let them, let them go, who've let them go down to ruins. People who have bought houses worth millions and have just left them. So you've got all these dilapidated properties that technically should be worth millions, but are worth nothing. Because if they're not being rented out and if they're not serving the economy, what value do they have? And when you think of money anyway, what value does it have? It doesn't even exist. It's just exchange. It's just an exchange. They're just bartering one thing for another. It's not real. Unless you can sell your house and get the cash, you don't have squat, really. You don't have squat because unless you invest that money that you've sold your house for into another house, the, the amount of inheritance tax you're going to pay on it must be about 40%. You're, you're, it's almost like they're forcing you to invest in something else, forcing you in debt, forcing you not to have any cash. So is this really the country that you wanted? Did you really want this? Is this what you voted for? I don't think so. Anyway, I think all of this, what um, Boris Johnson is going on with, I think is a facade. I think all of these question time and all questions back and forth, I think it's a facade. I think it's to make us think that they're interested in us lowly people. But I think it's just a big game. They don't care whether or not we leave with a deal or without a deal. They really don't care. In fact, they're hoping that they really want a no deal because it pushes us into poverty much quicker, which is what they want. It pushes, it pushes us down the pan much quicker. So, yeah, they're delaying it a little bit. I think, to be honest, I think they want to parallel whatever they're doing, whatever, with whatever America's doing. So everybody falls apart at the same time. Everybody is in poverty at the same time. Everybody loses their job at the same time. Everybody starts falling ill at the same time. I think all these little delay tactics, they're making it look like, oh, I, you know, um, Boris Johnson says, you know, I prefer to die in a ditch than get an extension. So there's no compromise. And he's got no intention of resigning. So what does that mean? He doesn't care about the people. He doesn't care about you and me. He doesn't care about all the regular people, people without my colour. No, it's the rich st sticking with the rich this time. Everybody else who thought that all this was a, all this was about was getting rid of immigrants. Sorry, folks, you've been done. Everybody's been done. From the immigrants all the way down to the working class to the poor everybody's been done anyway um they'll all, all the rich will jump ship and escape but well, you know one thing though you know what the rich cannot bank on natural disasters but i'm sure some of those rich people had hopes of you know going off to the bahamas and and um having putting their feet up but look what's happened to the Bahamas. So, you know, karma is a bitch, I'm telling you. You know, even whatever they are trying to do to, what, to us, whoever we are, you know, they cannot control natural disasters. And natural disasters can even uproot underground homes if it has to. Look at that Tosami. It can do anything volcanoes, hurricanes, whatever, they can do. We don't have to lift a finger. 
because there is a mightier force. So, you know, while they're on their high horses trying to get rid of all of these people who they feel are a pain in the ass, a waste of space, taking up our resources. They better watch their, what the, whatever they plan to invest in. How do they know there's not going to be another hurricane wherever they've decided to um, plan to leave? But I hear, I heard once that they, they've, there's this high, the high mountain in Singapore, I think it's in Singapore or Japan, it's the highest mountain. And apparently there's a lot of rich people planning to go on to that mountain because it's the only place i don't know whether it's true or not but it's the only place where nothing can be touched where they can be safe then they, when we hear they've got um properties in space they bought space homes i mean we don't know what's going on all we can do is live and hope for the best really that's all we can do to, to make the most of each and every day because we do not know what's happening to any one of us, regardless of colour, regardless of race, regardless of gender, regardless of religion, we do not know. They know what they've got planned for us, but we don't know what the Creator has got planned for the world. So, no point worrying about it. Uh, so, Brexit was sold as more money for the NHS. And, you know, what does that mean? We know that once um, we leave the EU, we know the NHS is going to be up for grabs. We know that. They'll say it's not, but we know it is. Um, we're going to have be of economic benefit, but they've sold off most of the industry. We're knee high in debt. Jobs are limited. An estimated of 14.2 million people in a family are in poverty in the UK. 8.4 million are working age adults. 4.5 million are children and 1.4 million are of pension age. Around 22% of the public are in po poverty and nearly 33% of children. And that's 218 figures. More people have been on universal credit than ever. Then they said we'll get the best trade deal of all time. That's another thing that why people voted for Brexit. That a no deal would never happen. And see, that is what they're rooting for, a no deal. Now politicians are arguing for and against a no deal. A deal or no deal was not an option on the ballot paper when we were voting. It was just leave or remain. We didn't know that there would be all this negotiation having to be taken place. They made it look like it was in the bag. We just go in there and tell them we're leaving. and We give them a little deposit or whatever it is and then we're out. Did not realise how indebted the UK is to the EU. The EU, the UK actually went into the join the EU because they were in austerity, because they were down the pan. And the EU rescued them. And now they're more or less spitting in their face and say, well, if you, you know, we're, we're OK, we can look after ourselves, we can do this, we can do that. They're talking about, you know, we got with no deal, limited to food supplies, no medication. Can you imagine what that's going to be like? Can you imagine what that's going to be like? And can you imagine that we're left behind while the rich with all their money jump on a plane or go wherever they go and they leave us to it, to rot, basically? That's because that's what, that's inevitable, isn't it? Unless there is a superior force that can turn things around. You people... You better start praying. I'm serious. This is no joke. Boris has now um, prorogued, what do they call it? Prorogued, prorogued the Parliament. So he's now gone up to the Queen with his Privy Council and said to her, look, we don't want any interference, basically. Please prorogue Parliament. 
And of course, she can't say no, you know, the British politeness, and you know, don't want to seem to be doing anything wrong. So she's agreed to have Parliament prorogued until the 14th of October, which means no legislation can be passed. Exist existing le legislation is halted. So nobody can kind of say they're going to do a deal or no deal legislation till the 14th of October. Then Boris Johnson said, oh, that gives us plenty of time to do negotiations. What, two weeks? They don't want any interference. They've already got a plan. They've already got a plan. They know exactly what they're doing. And they're, lump they're, they're just dropping us in it. So, um, anti-no-deal legislation can't be passed. The Queen has suspended Parliament for from this, this week to the 14th of October. Apparently, proroguing Parliament happens every autumn. Well, I've never heard of it, to be honest. And until now, it normally lasts a week, but it's unprecedented to last more than a month. And so... We're being set up to fail, I believe. We also said the rights of EU citizens to be respected. Many EU citizens are being given pre-settled status instead of the settled status they were promised. Some because of online applications are so complex, while others it's because of severe scrutiny. The Zambrano principle cannot be used anymore. Freedom of movement is restricted without proper documentation. Many are afraid to travel because they might be considered illegal. It's a replay of the Windrush, which hasn't played itself out fully yet. Still a lot of Windrushians who have not been compensated. Loss of jobs, can't get any, being wrongfully deported, loss of homes, reputation. Many of them died. They had no access to health care or benefits, couldn't rent property. That was the demise of the Windrushians, which the EU nationals could be facing. Similar. Talk about curbing immigration. This was another thing that they used to get people to vote Brexit. They lied by posting a false image of Syrian refugees, making it look like they were coming to the UK, when in fact they were heading for Turkey. They created the hostile environment policy. They've um, conducted illegal and unethical deportations and detentions. They've got Operation Nexus, which is stopping people at random and carting them off to detention centres. We've got the Section 60, which is meant to last for between 24 and 48 hours, which seems to have lengthened indiscriminately. We've got curb and curfew. We've got facial recognition cameras that are biased and faulty. We've got faulty algorithms being used in the Home Office. We've got undercover immigration officers in places of work. They're scapegoating immigrants, blaming outsiders for the state of the country instead of being accountable for what they have done wrong. And they've sold us all down the river. As everybody who ain't rich folks, regardless of colour, we've all been sold down the river. Ah, what else? I don't think white people banked on Brexit affecting them in this way, but there are certain things where blacks and the poor fall under the same umbrella. So if you're looking for systems to secure and protect you and your family, you need to be looking at systems that protect those of all ethnicities and races. All have to stick together, folks, if you're going to win this war. All have to stick together. It's the rich against the poor, because that is what this is about. It's not even the middle class. The middle class will be relegated to the poor. By force. And John Burko, I heard that he's going to resign on the 31st of October if they um, if they don't call, a, call an election. Goodness, what is going on? Ah, the vote to leave the EU was in 2016. People have received more information since then and so are more knowledgeable of the consequences. So I think if there was another election, there would be maybe a, the same result, maybe a different result, but at least people would be voting with their eyes wide open. They'd be voting consciously. Whereas before, I think they voted with 
passion and with emotion. You know, I don't think a lot of the voting was logical and rational. And it was meant to be like that because the campaign was emotive. Uh, so what are we contending with now? There's no compromise. There's the clash of the egos. Boris Johnson claims I'll die in a ditch rather than ask for an extension. I mean, how narcissistic, selfish, egotistical and myopic is that? People have changed their minds, but no general election. People are so frustrated they probably won't vote anyway. That's a, that's a problem, you know. We don't even know. People might be, be so peed off with this that even if there was a general election, they might not go out. But you know who I think will go out this time? I think the young people will go out. I really do. I think the young people who now see what's going on and see their future going down the pan are the ones who are going to rise and save a lot of us. I don't think it's going to be, you know, the middle-aged and the elderly because we're weary. You know what I mean? Weary of it all. Um, yeah, and I was thinking, you know, when they keep talking about us not, um, you know, we voted three years ago for Brexit. You know, we're in a male dominated society and males don't really change their minds that easy, whereas women do. You know, they always say it's a woman's prerogative to change her mind. And so when you get women changing their minds and, you know, I was listening to them um, really bully Emily Thornberry MP on Question Time because, you know, she was trying to compromise. It's a female thing. But they were trying to make her look like she didn't know what she wanted. And, you know, she changed her mind this minute. But, you know, you're allowed to change your mind. It doesn't mean. And that's what they used to say about um, Theresa May. You know, it's like we're not allowed to change our minds. But it's a female prerogative. But it does not work in a parochial and paternalistic society. It doesn't work. So if you're a woman and you change your mind, you're called emotional, unbalanced and all this kind of crap. But the fact of the matter is people have changed their mind about leaving. Because now they have more, they have a better knowledge base, they're more informed. But we're not going to get another chance, babe, because these people just want it to go through. They got their plans, they know what they're doing and we are just followers in the game. Anyway, um, let me see what else I've got here. Ploy to eliminate the middle classes and relegate them to the working class, rich or poor, no in between. Black people who are rubbing shoulders with the rich and wealthy will soon find that they have to sell their soul or be relegated to the poor side of town. And that's true. You get, I'm not going to call any names, but you get some people who are rubbing shoulders up there, feel that they're protected, feel that they're okay. They're going to have to sell their soul or be relegated to the poor side of town. Make sure, anyway, I, won't even, I was going to say a little patois, but I decided not to. Memba uh, Mitelio. Anyway, threat, a threat to food supplies and medicines, illness, hunger, poverty, frustration, civil war, and then, of course, World War Three, which they're all predicting. Locking down Parliament is about taking control. Too many similarities with Trump both disguise their intelligence and intellectual capacity with buffoonery. They make us think that they're stupid when they are not. They are far from stupid, far from idiots, far from wayward. They know exactly what they're doing. Both of them know what they're doing. But look, the sad thing is, is that they're playing games with our lives, black, white and the in-between. Deliberate attempt to sabotage the reputation of the UK. They want to cleanse the UK, kill off everyone and start over on a clean white slate. But it will be action replay where they are too high and mighty to do the dirty work themselves and will be seeking foreigners again to do it for them. Because that's what they did before, you know. Get rid of everyone, you know, have a world war. And then they, they were um, begging the EU, begging um, all the people from the EU. Then they ended up begging people from the Caribbean and goodness knows where else. And they'll end up in the same bloody um, mess because they've called it a mess. They use us to build them up and then they want to kick us out. 
I don't know why they don't just give us a contract. Why they don't just say, listen, we need you to help us out. And this is going to take five years. Do this. And then leave. I don't think it would make a difference. I'm sure the Polish, the people from the EU, the Romanians, they would still work the same way. People from Caribbean and Africa will still work for the same way as those five years, but they would know that they are going back. But there's a reason why they make us feel comfortable and safe. Because they want us to invest our money and our resources in the country. And then they want to kick us out on our rear without nothing. Look at all those people in the Windrush who worked for years, paid off for their homes, and then they kick them out illegally. And who gets their homes? The government. The government doesn't care about the UK. They see it as a dirt pit full of debt, foreigners and worthless properties. Properties are meant to be worth something, but unless you sell them and get the cash, they're worthless. And then they tax, tax you left, right and centre if you decide to sell and not invest in a larger property. They're already planning to jump ship. Plans for the Bahamas? Hurricane Dorian. Say no more. Democracy? There isn't any. Used to vote every five years, that stopped. We have no say who's Prime Minister. We have no say, full stop. That's all for now. Bye-bye.